Ohua is the newest abundance unit to come to Honkai Star Rail in patch 1.5. She offers a unique way to trigger heals, and she also has hints of harmony in her kit. However, will she bring enough to replace current sustain units, or is she more for the players that skipped the other limited sustain units? This video will cover her kit and compare her healing output to other abundance characters, and will also give you an idea if Hoho is worth it for you. All that aside, Hoho looks like like a very awesomely designed character and at the end of the day you should always just pull for the characters that you love the most. So firstly, as an abundance character, Oho does indeed scale off of HP. In fact, she currently has the highest HP in the game compared to other abundance units. Her basic attack is a very simple one. It scales off of her HP, just like Fushuan and Lynx. Now it's kind of weird that Natasha didn't get this treatment. I always wondered why that was the case. What's going on over there at Hoyo? Anyway, next up is her skill, Talisman protection and this is a HP restoring skill that will dispel one buff on a single target ally and then immediately restore that ally's HP equal to 21% of Ho Ho's maximum HP plus 560 at talent level 10. It also then heals adjacent allies by a slightly lower multiplier 16.8% plus 448. So this is pretty much a blast heal. Other than that, this is a pretty simple skill that, in terms of raw healing numbers, heals quite a lot. A level 80 Ho Ho that can hit 5,885 HP. This means she's using a max level to 4 star light cone and HP percent on both of her planar ornament relics and an outgoing healing body. Is able to heal about 2,415 with her skill to the selected target and then 1,932 to adjacent allies. Next up is her ultimate, Tail Spiritual Domination. This is a support type ultimate, so it does not deal any type of damage. This will regenerate all allies' energy equal to 20% of their maximum respective energy. At the same time, also increases their attack by 40% for two turns. This is at talent level 10. This means that the higher energy cost a character has, the more energy they're going to gain. So if your ultimate costs 100 energy, you're going to regain 20 energy. If it's 110, 22, 120, 24, 130, 26, 140, 28. So every 10 maximum energy, you get an extra 2 energy. And with Argenti on the horizon, he has a very high energy cost, 180. So that means he regens 36 with Hoho's ultimate. Now also as a side note, the energy gain that you get is going to be based off of the receiving character's energy regeneration rate and not Hoho's. So that means if Hoho was holding onto an ERR rope, she is not going to affect how much energy regen she provides for the teammates that she uses her ultimate on. Hoho's ultimate also costs 140 energy. Now let's move on to her talent, Possession, Ethereal, Metaflow. After using her skill, she's going to get a special property called Sacrifice Life, which lasts two turns. The duration will decrease by one turn at the start of Hoho's each turn. And basically what this talent does is that at the start of any ally's turn or when they use their ultimate, it will restore that ally's HP. The amount of HP healed is 4.5% of Hoho's HP plus 120 at talent level 10. Additionally, whenever this gets triggered, any ally that is below 50% HP will get healed by the same amount. Additionally, whenever that heal is triggered, it will dispel one debuff from that ally. The effect can only be triggered up to six times and will reset whenever you use your skill. There are several unknowns about how this talent works and we'll find out when she releases. Firstly, what is defined as an ally's turn? For example, follow-up attacks and the extra turn mechanic are not actually turns within the game's coding. So do these attacks trigger her talent? Also, the order of operations on her heal. If the heal occurs first, then in the case of characters at full health and also if they are inflicted with a dot they will simply just take damage from the dot since you can't heal when you're at full hp 
So just a couple of lingering questions about how her talent works, but they're definitely important interactions that are good to know. So with how her talent works, Oho is going to absolutely need to be built for speed. The six stacks from her talent will drain too quickly if she's not fast enough. If all of your allies take two actions before Hoho takes her turn regularly, then all of the stacks will be gone by the time Hoho takes her next turn. Then she is going to need to reset her talent even though the sacrificed life lasts two turns, making her quite SP inefficient. And then of course when you start to add ultimates to this, those six stacks will definitely deplete very quickly. Stacks also presumably deplete even if the app's at full health. Another question slash unknown that we need to find out when she releases. So there's basically really no way around this. Now that we understand Hoho's kit a little bit better, I'm going to give you guys my opinion on how she'll perform as a healer, not necessarily as a character as a whole. And so this opinion is meant to generate discussion and not to overhype or to complain about her kit. Her kit is definitely more than just about healing. So first off, she lacks a strong and consistent heal. A heal that can be used reactively to strong moves. Her ultimate cannot be used as an emergency heal in between a boss's action and their extra action simply because her ultimate is not a heal, unlike Natasha, Lynx, and Bailu. Even Locha has a sort of emergency heal that triggers when an ally drops below 50%, and he will take that action immediately even in between the boss's actions. Oh, is below 50% heal is technically an auto-triggered heal, but it's not as auto-triggered as Locha's. The heal is also significantly weaker than Locha's auto-heal. It's based off of 4.5% of her HP plus 120. It also doesn't generate any energy for her, and her ultimate is pretty expensive at 140. The way around this lack of emergency heal is that you basically need to have other ally ultimates ready to pop in between the boss's actions to trigger that 50% heal, or to just have the ultimate of the character that you need to heal already charged and then slip that ultimate in in between the actions of the boss. This just means that Oho is going to require some proper planning and skill when those situations arise. Some players might like that, some players may not. And so this will be the main deal breaker on whether or not you want Hoho to be your main sustained character. Her big heals can only come from her skill, and then with a very fast team, her talent is going to be able to keep the team topped off pretty well. But again, it's really those scary situations when the boss pops a really strong attack, and then you need to insert a heal in between them. But this is not to say that Hoho is a bad character, because her kit provides more than just healing. She has that attack boost and that energy regeneration for the entire team. You just need to make that decision on whether or not you can live with this type of healing. For very invested players with really strong characters, this is probably going to be a non-issue. But for people that have a little bit weaker characters that aren't really fully leveled yet and are trying to tackle really difficult content, the sustain might not be there. Now let's move on to some heal comparisons between Hoho and some of our other Abundance characters. I mentioned earlier that a level 80 Hoho can hit about 5,885 HP using a max level 4 star light cone and then HP percentage on both planar ornament relics. Also an outgoing healing body, speed boots, and then a couple of substats and HP percentage. With this build, she heals for about 2,415 with her skill to the target and then 1,932 to adjacent and allies at talent level 10 and as mentioned if you are healing all that hp up that's a lot that's about 6,000 points of healing in terms of just raw numbers it's definitely one of the best heals for a single skill in the game her talent is going to heal 518 at the start of every ally's turn or when they pop their ultimate compared to four star counterparts her skill heals significantly more natasha is only 10 percent of her hp and links as 12 percent with some extra flat healing on both of those Natasha, though, does have an extra 10% outgoing healing from Traces, and Lynx increases maximum HP. Now, a Lynx with a very similar build reaches about 5,200 HP because she just has a lower base HP, and she heals for 1,273 HP with her skill, so definitely a lot less than Hoho's skill. Compared to Locha, he reaches 2,800 attack with a similar build, replacing the HP percent with attack percent. He heals for about 2,480 HP. 
with his skill. But that's very, very similar heals to the target. Locha's healing field heals for 677, only slightly more than Hoho's talent. So overall, their healing is very similar in terms of numbers, but the way that their heals function are quite different. Their talents are also quite similar. Hoho triggers no matter what at the start of a character's turn, but Locha's requires an attack on the enemy. Locha's below 50% HP will automatically trigger and has a two-turn cooldown, but it also regenerates energy for him. Oho's 50% HP threshold heal will trigger only at the start of a turn or when an ultimate is used, but it has no cooldown, but it is also significantly weaker and does not generate energy for Hoho. And moving on very quickly to our technique, it's probably a technique that won't have much use in the Memory of Chaos or the Simulated Universe, but upon using it, it will cause enemies to flee, and also upon entering battle has a 100% base chance to reduce their attack by 25%. Now let's go through her traces. First off, her minor traces are 5 points of speed, 18% effect resistance, and 28% HP percent. Her first major trace is that when her talent is triggered to heal allies, Oho will regenerate 1 energy. This is a pretty easy 6 energy regenerated every time after you use your skill. Her second trace is that she resists CC debuffs by 35%. And then her third trace is that when the battle starts, she gains Sacrifice Life, lasting for one turn. Sacrifice Life lasting only one turn is kind of an odd trace since the duration decreases by one at the start of each of her turns. This means that if Huo Huo is the fastest character on the team and she acts first at the start of a battle, this means that the trace is pretty much completely useless. So I'm really curious about this trace and whether or not they're going to change this one. Unless I'm missing something, please feel free to leave a comment. But so far, this trace is definitely a little bit out of place in my opinion. Perhaps there's an Eidolon that can change this, but needing an Eidolon to make a major trace usable is kind of terrible design in my opinion. So I hope that that is not the case. Now let's just very quickly go through relics, light cones, and team synergies. In terms of relics, you want to build Hoho to be very, 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 very fast. You want it to be fast, super fast. This means that standard support sets are great for her, Musketeer of Wild Wheat, and the Hacker Space set. You'll definitely want to go with outgoing healing over HP percentage on the body if you want the better heals. Going HP percentage will give you lower heals, but obviously just more HP or more survivability if that's what you want instead. Although in my opinion, about 5,800 HP is plenty. For the planar ornaments, definitely both on HP percentage. And then some kind of support set, like Broken Keel or Fleet of the Ageless. They're also one of the new ones coming in the patch, which I am deliberately not mentioning in this video just yet. You can keep an eye out for other videos on this channel for what those new relics are going to bring to the game. Now in terms of light cones, Abundance characters have tons of options, but of course her signature light cone is going to definitely be her best. It gives energy regeneration, extra healing, and also an attack boost for all allies. And so when it comes to our 4 star options and some 3 star options, it really comes down to your preferred playstyle. Many players value energy regen, so quid pro quo is a solid 4 star options. Assuming all same super imposition levels, perfect timing has the potential to increase outgoing healing the most, apart from the new free 4-star abundance light cone that we'll be getting in the new patch. That said, the new free 4-star abundance light cone will increase maximum HP and outgoing healing after using a skill, which lasts two turns. Those three light cones are definitely your top options for her. Many players don't prefer using the battle pass light cone or shared feeling because the healing from the battle pass light cone is really low and the energy regen from shared feeling is also too low. Doesn't mean they're bad options, they can certainly be used. Post op is a decent light cone to give energy regen, but its secondary effect to increase outgoing healing won't apply since her ultimate doesn't heal allies. Bailu's signature light cone works out pretty well, provides some middling damage, but two stats that are important for healing, maximum HP and outgoing healing. Compared to the free light cone that we're getting, Bailu's light cone will give better maximum HP increase, but lower outgoing healing, 
at S1. The 5 star Lycone also just has better stats though, which will make an overall difference on her maximum HP and then thus her outgoing healing. If you happen to have Bailu's signature Lycone, definitely use that, but don't go out of your way to get it. Now in terms of team synergies, characters that like to use their ultimates will definitely like her, but since she's a sustained unit, she's going to be able to fit into most teams that need a healer. Also characters that have a higher than average ultimate cost will get a higher value amount of energy regenerated to them when she pops her ultimate. So those types of characters will definitely like Ho Ho. Jing Liu, for example, has a 140 cost ultimate and also Ho Ho's talent will basically heal up the 4% health drain from her kit. Dot characters as well will definitely enjoy the attack boost to increase their dot damage, but also a lot of them have powerful ults to detonate their dots. So Ho Ho's ultimate can help to accelerate that. Those are the types of characters that Ho Ho will synergize best in my opinion, but she will of course be able to slot into basically any team as the sustained unit. Thank you for watching and keep your eye out on some more Ho Ho content within the next couple days and weeks, leading up to the next 1.5 patch.